Good morning everybody, Josh here, Crypto News and Reviews, and just wanted to jump on to a quick video this morning with some news and updates. Look at the market cap, $396 billion, uh, had a little bit of recovery overnight, we slipped a little bit backwards, uh, my overall portfolio was hanging about the same from yesterday, so it is what it is, Bitcoin's not doing so hot, down 8.5% over the past 24 hours down to 8,300. Um, Litecoin doing about the same. Actually, Litecoin's holding holding decent, and I'm going to get to some Litecoin news here momentarily, momentarily with the LitePay system coming out. Pretty exciting stuff. Um, Ethereum's dipping. Everything's in the red for the most part. Happy Super Bowl Sunday to those of you football fans in America. Uh, living in South Australia, it's just not that big of a deal. Nobody uh, nobody really pays that much attention to it down here. It is on the TV. Uh, last I checked, the Eagles were up 9-3. to three. Anyhow, let's jump into some news. So, of course, like I mentioned, the first bit of news is that LightPay is supposed to launch this week. Um, basically... Companies can set up with LightPay. It's going to be a Visa card issued to people with Litecoin in their wallet. They swipe it. It does an instant transaction to Fiat and deposits Fiat in the company's account, withdrawing Litecoin from their account. Um, this is fantastic news. This is mainstream implementation of a cryptocurrency. Um, so if you go, there's a current exchange rate. Right now, one Litecoin is equal to 150.7 US dollars. And let's just refresh that and see if that changes here. Yes, so look at that, 149.64. So it's updating constantly. Now, this is fantastic, like I said, for cryptocurrencies in general, especially for the, the coins trying to be a store of wealth or means of currency such as uh, Bitcoin and Litecoin. So basically they pull all the data from exchanges, USA and the Eurozone exchanges, and that is what they base their exchange rate on. Now it's going to be a Visa card, which is a magnificent. It's Visa is accepted almost everywhere in the world, and there won't be any international exchange rates on that. The other beauty of this is, I saw it somewhere on here, um, let's go into accepting Litecoin. Thirty-eight countries will allow LightPay to happen. Um, I saw it in here somewhere. Of course, if you click to accept it now, it still says it's in private beta with sign-up starting February 2018, which we are now in February 2018. So once again, promise of technology um, this year. We better see some coming out. We better see some real-life implementation. Now, I did see somewhere. Here it is right here. Credit cards take up to a 3% processing fee on every transaction. Litecoin and LightPay will be direct bank deposits with a simple flat rate of a 1% settlement charge. So that's significant. I would absolutely use this if I'm traveling. I go to the States quite a bit. Um, same with Asia, New Zealand. Instead of having to convert money over, my bank charges me a... Uh, my cre the credit card fees plus like a two per two point eight percent or something when I use international transactions. This is going to be a one percent. I just would load up my Litecoin wallet, spend on my Visa card, automatically converts to the current rate and deducts it for, as U.S. dollars. Um, super excited about this. I have uh, submitted my email address. I'm going to apply for this as soon as it's available, and we'll put it to a real world test. So as soon as I do that, I will. Um, do a video on, on my first Litecoin transaction in the real world. I'll go buy a, a coffee or a, a muffin from the bakery here and see how that goes. Next bit of news is, um, this is, this is something I've been saying. This is interesting. Cryptocurrencies are necessary for blockchains to operate. So a lot of people understand, or, or they kind of get that the blockchain is here to stay and it's a technology we need. But why do we need cryptocurrencies What's the point of having co coins and tokens when the blockchain is simply a ledger? The, well, this article 
what the basics idea is that you have to have some incentive. Banks have incentive to offer credit cards and loans through interest. Well, miners, if there's no incentive, why would they mine? What's the point of building a rig, spending the electricity, if there's no incentive? The coins, the tokens, are rewards. Same with staking. Why would you hold any Cardano coming up here in the future when you to, for staking if there's no reward for staking? Why wouldn't you just convert it over to a currency like Litecoin that you could spend and spend it? Same with Litecoin. If there's no incentive to mine Litecoin or Bitcoin, why would anybody mine it? So that's why coins are necessary. I think that's what a lot of people don't get. They, under, they, they understand blockchain is important and it is the future. But why do we need this market, this cryptocurrency market? Uh, it seems unnecessary. Um, and that's what the South Korean finance minister is saying is blockchain technology can disrupt and revolutionize the world. But for open source blockchain networks, cryptocurrencies are necessary as incentives for individuals to participate in the network. So once again, yeah, you need some incentive for people to mine, for people to stake their coins. If there's no incentive, nobody's going to participate, and then it's a useless technology. So that's what a lot of people, I, I think, don't understand at the moment, and that's what you should try to, when people ask you about blockchain and uh, you know, you, you explain the, why the, how the blockchain works as this public ledger. But people say, well, okay, why should I invest? Why, is, why do I need coins? Well, it's the incentive program, and that's what's going to drive the price of cryptocurrencies is the, that these coins will fuel the blockchain. So blockchain and cryptocurrencies, even though they're slightly separated from each other, they're impossible to exist without one another. So I thought that was a good article. That is from uh, newsbtc.com. Um, coin market. Oh, all right. So we've got another. We've had crypto celebrities. Well, now we have crypto countries. So the next craze. And uh, I'm just setting up my account. So as soon as I get on, I'll do a video on this more in depth. But what I want to touch on is, is slightly separate from this. So the next Ethereum blockchain game has arrived and early adapters are rushing to cash in on the next crypto craze, crypto countries. So similar to crypto celebrities, you can now buy countries. And there's a little bit more to this one, though, than crypto kitties or crypto celebrities, where those you were literally just trading or not, not even trading, but with crypto celebrities, you could purchase the celebrity and then hopefully somebody else purchased it from you at a higher rate, giving you a percentage uh, with a chance of donating to um, uh, the celebrity. You know, if the celebrity registered, you could donate to a, a foundation of their choice. But anyway, blockchain-based collectors games such as these create a level of FOMO that cause assets to change hands for thousands of dollars. Now, one key difference with crypto countries is that rewards go up as the countries become increase in value. So basically, now they're building this into a game. So it's not just going to be like you buy the U.S. and hope somebody else wants to throw down more for the U.S. You're actually going to be able to interact with your countries. There's going to be an economic background. There's going to be military um, background. Um, Right now, there are 30 countries available for acquisition of the 200 countries in the world. You can buy and hold a country and watch your color cover the interactive world map. But the developers have announced a game mode where country owners can participate in battles and war to gain profits. So I'm guessing you'll be able to invest even more Ethereum, build up an army, build up uh, politics, and then interact with other countries based on their possibly even take over countries and gain their coins um, south korea is the most expensive country at five ethereum followed by jamaica and brazil what decides the country the value of the country is completely player driven and most likely has to do with the affection area on the map of the current events so Within the game, there's going to be a whole dynamic of world politics and war and all of this taking place, and you can actually be rewarded by building a stronger military, etc. So it's interesting. Again, I'm going to set up my account. I'm just going to go in and have some fun with this. Um, if I can get something for one Ethereum, I may do it just just as an experiment. I know the crypto celebrities took off, crypto kitties took off. But the more important thing out of this is, well, two things. 
first off, it shows the immaturity and that we really want something to use our cryptocurrencies for beyond just trading them on, on exchanges. So right now, there's not a whole lot you can do with cryptocurrency other than trade it on exchanges. So anything right now is being flocked to. Um, we desperately need something to do with our cryptocurrencies. That's why I'm saying 2018, these companies that are promising all this technology and this implementation in the real world, they need to come through with it because we are desperately starving to do something with our cryptocurrencies. So that's one thing it shows. But the second thing I think it shows is, and I've touched on this before, the idea that digital assets, one-of-a-kind, limited digital assets with the blockchain can become actual positive assets. One-off artwork, one-of-a-kind manuscripts, whatever it may be that you can prove on the blockchain, there's only one of these, could become as valuable as, say, a, a football card that has an autograph that's a one-of-one. One. That's much more valuable than a card that they printed a hundred million of, you know what I mean? It's the idea that there's only one of these, or only five of these, or only ten of these. That People love that, and people chase that. And I think this is yet more proof that the blockchain can prove that, that an asset's a one-off, and, and, and add value to something. So... Keep an eye on this space. Um, I know there's already been uh, art exhibits where they're selling one-off digital assets, digital artwork that is proved on the blockchain to be one-off. Your name is attached to it. It shows who the owner is, and if you'd like to sell it, that property, basically the ledger, transfers ownership, and somebody else then has control of that artwork or, like I said, manuscript or whatever it may be. But... Um, the idea that there's only one of them always drives value, and the blockchain is something that can prove that. So basically, when you buy Russia, you're the only person in the world that owns it. Now, granted, the value of that is only worth it if somebody else finds value in that as well. But I think that's uh, something the blockchain can help with. So anyway, that's the news for the day, guys. I just thought I'd jump on, do a little video about uh, the few articles I found interesting today. Of course, Sunday, Super Bowl Sunday, the news is a little slow, but I think this is this is interesting. So yeah, I'm going to set up an account. I'll jump in there, and I will do a video as soon as I um, get established on the world map. So we'll see how that goes. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe below. Again, we're gaining traction. I really appreciate it, everybody that's subscribing. I'm having a lot of fun doing these videos. I'm going to keep them coming every day, two, three a day, if, uh, if the news deems it worthy. And... Um, yeah, we'll talk to you soon. Take care, guys.